this is really important to me that I feel like I, um, I am really, really trying to meet kids halfway. And that's been happening mo really since about, well, the first one I did like that would, would have been 39 clues. But right around that same time, um, I was working with David Levithan on Skeleton Creek when we were working on Skeleton Creek. Those were happening, uh, Skeleton Creek and 39 Clues were happening simultaneously. Um, and so we were having a lot of conversations about how, you know, this tidal wave of technology was happening with kids where they were getting self, they were starting to get cell phones, they were starting to be online. There was just, there was a lot happening with already big challenges, especially for Title I schools. Um, just getting way, way more intense where get, having kids want to actually turn pages and books was just getting tougher. And I think I have always felt like um, there's got to be a way to meet kids part way uh, because a lot of young people are not simply not going to read for pleasure unless you find a way to draw them in. And so I had been thinking a lot about that and partly because I, to be perfectly honest, there was a pretty big stretch of my own childhood where I was a very reluctant reader. I enjoyed reading comic books, but I did not uh, really enjoy books without pictures in them for quite a while. It took me a while to kind of get over that. And I was thinking about, as most authors do who write for young people, what, what, what could I write that, what, that I would have actually wanted to read when I was a kid? So contextually, I'd say the fact that it's scary is, uh, is something I would have liked. Um, the fact that there's a, uh, a young, a boy and a girl, like right around that sort of 13 age that, that I probably would have tapped into, but more than that, in terms of format, something that I could actually, if somebody were to say, Hey, you can watch part of the story, you get to read part of it, but you also get to watch part of it, get to watch all the scary parts. Um, there's no, that, that is a book I would have checked out. That's been the first book I checked out of my library. So, um, I had been thinking about format already for a couple of years but I hadn't been able to come up with a story that would work for that. And then when I went, I actually, this, that, that dredge, so there's an old dredge. And if you don't know what that is, they used to use these dredges to, to mine for gold. And they were eventually outlawed because they create so much damage to the environment. Uh, but there's one of these old dredges uh, about an hour and a half from Walla Walla where I live. And for some weird reason, we had a family vacation up there because there's literally nothing up there besides the dredge. There's <laughs> like, I mean, you really are out in the middle of nowhere nowhere and I don't know why we ended up there um but we were going up there I guess uh, just to hike and hang around want to take a break whatever so we're up in the middle of the woods and there's this dredge and I remember when I very first saw that thing and I was like what is this thing because it's a lot bigger than people realize this is a, it's, these are these are big uh industrial uh, machines that look kind of like a giant warehouse sitting in a pond uh, and it moves along. Once I understood how the dredge worked and, and I went inside of it and heard there was an actual ghost story in there, uh, it just all literally in like a one, uh, three or four hour span, the whole, the whole thing came together. And that what I mean by that, Jake, is that there was like, if I could tell a story where one kid is a writer and is kind of a chicken, loves to write scary stories, but doesn't want to be in one and is convinced that his town is haunted and his best friend was somebody else who didn't really like to read, didn't really like to write, but loved to go out and, and shoot stuff with a camera, was a storyteller in their own right, but did it in a different way. That would be a great set of this because we got this great, cool haunted looking building. Um, and we've got two characters that are gonna tell the story and I could, I, it all came together, like literally like in a matter of uh, one evening. No, I came up with this idea by myself that the, the, the uh, there was one other moment I remember when I was with one of my best friends and we were watching a I think we were watching a basketball game and at some point I said you know it'd be cool if I was a kid that the, the one thing I would like the most is if you could be reading a book and you turn the page and there's a candy bar and if you eat the candy bar then you re keep reading and it's like oh my god it's another candy bar <laughs> and we were laughing about this we thought that was a but I was like so what's the equivalent of a candy bar and uh it all played into this idea of like kids will happily watch, you know, animated shows or they'll watch, you know, R.L. Stein style, like scary stuff when they're in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, or they'll watch whatever they'll, that, that, that kind of stuff is like, not, that's like, that's like the entertainment equivalent of candy. And so I think I just, I had the idea of mixing them together. It took a little while, but again, there was that one day when I was at that dredge where it all just sort of came together. Oh yeah, there'll be past. She, she's somebody who's got this camera. She's going to go out and shoot all this stuff. And where's she going to put it? She can put it somewhere where they can go there and they can find it. And the book would be a journal. I wanted it to be a journal because it's probably the most accessible type of writing for a young reader. 
to be able to just read one kid writing stream of conscious or just writing what's happening to them as it's happening. And that's just very easy to read. Really, this was very intentional. Um, by that time, I had worked with a lot of librarians. So I've, to date, I've visited uh, over 3,000 schools. So I go to a lot of schools. I mean, that, L, that first Elyon tour was like 300 schools. I mean, I'm, I'm always out. Next year, I'll go to probably 250 schools. I just, that's a very important part of this for me. And having talked to a lot of librarians, I just, I felt like I understood the challenges they were having and the, the, the ways in which, the, like the best way you can get a young person to learn is that they would go off and hunt for information on their own unprompted. And so those passwords were very intentional. If you go back and look at all the passwords, in fact, you can go to skeletoncreek.com and there's a whole page devoted to just the passwords. Um, but in the beginning, it was just like, oh, look at these weird passwords. What do these mean? So you'd have like a password that a young fifth or sixth grade student wouldn't have any idea what this means. Some of us of a generation might understand it, like an Edgar Allan Poe reference or a scary old Gothic novel reference or some, some there, some of them are kind of random, but if you were to go online and put that password into a search engine, it would immediately lead you down a pathway of, uh, and I heard over and over again from teachers, like that is one of the best things about this is when we find kids coming up to us and saying, have you looked at this password? Uh, this takes me to this weird book that I checked out last night or this, or this old, like the first uh, Dracula movie or the, the, you know, all kinds of fun stuff that kids start to go down these paths and really have a fun time with. I've been doing this long enough now, Jake, that it's like, I think a lot of folks in my situation would be like, okay, well, it's time to start writing this sort of middle grade literary stuff, you know, something that's, that's got, um, that feels a little bit more like a, a award track type things. And I don't really operate like that. Um, I'm more about what, what is it that's going to get kids to read today? And it's ever changing and, and it is just getting harder and harder. I mean, if you are, if you're, if your boots on the ground, you're always going to have kids who are readers. Um, you're always going to have like, you know, the private school track, which is obviously not an issue. You're going to have, you know, bigger schools that where it's a much bigger issue. And you're going to have title one schools where it's a, a very large issue that getting kids to turn pages in books is harder than it's ever been. And test scores are lower than they've ever been. And so I really am. I mean, I've been for 20 years on a mission to figure out ways to get those kids back into books. And so some of these projects that I do are not designed to be like, this is the kind of book you're going to read for the rest of your life. It's like a lifeline. It's like, try this book. And maybe if you finish it, you'll actually want to go read something else. And I've got a big enough body of work now. They can always find more stuff that I've written or somebody like me has written. So with Tower Vale, I wanted to make something that was like Skeleton Creek, but it was a book and a video game at the same time. And the way that I, and so there were things I needed to check off about how that would work. Like it couldn't be like, oh, you can go play the game or you could read the book and they're not really intertwined. You don't have to do, you can do one or the other and it's totally fine. That, that's how I've thought about all these things that they are, they are inexplicably linked so that they, it's not just a bunch of extra stuff that if you read the books, oh, you might want to do this. You have to read the book and you have to play the game. How could I set that up? So that's the reality of this series. And so the way I did that was Tower Veil is, is, is written out of order. So you have seven sections of this book that if you get to the end of, you get to like page 30 of the book, it'll say, don't turn the page or you'll be completely on the wrong page of this book, which is kind of a fun thing for a kid to think about. It says on that next page, it says, instead, go get the app. You can get it on your phone. You can do it on a computer. It's totally free. It's basically like a 2D platform or like a Mario Brothers game. And go get the game. And, um, and you've got to beat the first level of the game. So they go in and they try to beat that level. And if they beat the level of the game, then it will tell them what page to turn to in the book. But the other great trick to this thing is, if they were to just go download the game, which they could, and go in on level one, they'd be trapped in that level literally forever because they have no idea what they're doing. The book tells them how to beat the game. So you see how this is what's so fun about this is that, yeah, you get to play a video game. This is super good. Like we'll let, we're gonna, this is a reading experience where we're encouraging you to actually go off and play a video game. Um, but if you don't read that first section, you're just gonna be like lost. As long as you read it, it'll be like, oh, I know what to do because I read this and it told me what to do. So there's a little, little bit in there that will get you to that. And that happens seven times. So they read a little ways, they play a level of the game and they work their way through the entire story. So that's been, again, 
Skeleton Creek and Towerville are the two that have probably been the most wildly popular over a long period of time in schools because librarians are able to use those as a gateway to reading. 